Hey church family, hope you guys are doing well. Uh, there is something specific that I wanna share with you, but let me ask you guys this question first. Have you ever seen someone that needed help, but you didn't help them? Come on, let's be honest. Raise your hand if that was you. You know, um, there's one example that I wanna share with you, and um, it's funny because a couple of weeks ago, uh, my wife was actually uh, updating her uh, phone um, and she just couldn't get it. There was just something that was just messing up the whole entire updating experience and just, you know, trying to fix things. Now, um, side note, she did have an old phone. So let me just say, you know, let me just throw that out there. So she was like, Danny, Danny, help me out. And I'm just like, uh, no, it's not my problem. It's not mine. You know, why am I going to help you out? Uh, it's not my problem, so I don't have to worry about it. Um, long story short, I tried to help her out. Um, it wasn't the phone's fault. It was just that the phone was so old that it, we needed to actually take it in and get it taken care of. But anyways, um, what I want to share with you today is called It's Not My Problem. It's Not My Problem. And um, we are the change that we want to see in this world. Now, I don't know if you have been feeling this way lately, but if you want to see change in this world, are you being part of that change or are you the problem? You know, just think about this for just a couple of seconds here. We need to take a look at our hearts. For the next couple of minutes that I have with you, we need to take a look at our hearts because in the Bible it says that the heart is wicked. And you can say one thing with your mouth, but God knows what's really in your heart. Also in the Bible it says, as a man thinketh, so is he. Now we have to inspect our hearts so that we can be more like God. I don't know about you, but only God is the answer. Can I get an amen, somebody? Because how can we love God that we haven't seen and not love our brothers who we do see on a daily basis? You know, and the Bible says that God is love. Now, if we really love God, then we must love others, even if we don't agree on the same topics, even if uh, they have different uh, skin color than you. We must learn to love God just as much as he loved us. And we have to do what we can to help other people out. You know, the key is love of Jesus Christ being shown through our lives so that we can share it with everyone that we face, everyone that we encounter, so that we can be that vessel to lead them to Jesus because only Jesus is the solution to everything that's going on. And just thinking about the latest things that have been going on here in this world, I am reminded about a passage that is found in Luke 10, 25 through 37. You can read that on your own. I'm gonna be skimming through it. But before we get to this part, through this passage, there was a religious scholar that was trying to test Jesus and he was trying to find a hole, trying to get Jesus to, to look bad. And as they're having this, this conversation, this religious leader asked Jesus, who is your neighbor? He's asking him, who is your neighbor? Because he's trying to, to, to make Jesus look bad in front of the audience, in front of everyone that's there listening to him. And he says, who is our neighbor? And then I love Jesus' response because he then leads uh, with a story that just made this guy just being all like, whoa, I've never thought about it like this. And then he goes on to tell the story of the Good Samaritan. You know, if we were to look at this passage in Luke 10, we would see that um, there are three characters in this passage. We see the priest, the Levite, and the Good Samaritan. Now, the priest, if we were to really understand who the priest is, you know, the priest, he passed by the other side. You know, this was a priest who was a spiritual leader. He brought people closer to God, and but, but yet he had more important matters than helping someone in need. So he crossed the other side. He crossed the street to avoid, to avoid, con, uh, avoid eye contact. You know, and sometimes it's easier to avoid the things that you cannot see. So he invested his time and energy into something else. He invested his time and, and energy into crossing to the other side instead of taking the time and helping this person who was in need. You know, a lot of us walk past problems that we have to answer to. 
Or we say, you know what, Pastor Jane, it's not my problem. It's not my fault. I didn't cause this, so I don't have to help. But just because you didn't cause the problem doesn't mean you are not the answer to the problem. You know, saying that it's not my problem is often an indication that you're living for yourself instead of living for other people. Even if, even if the suffering that we see that is going on here in this world is something that, that maybe you might not be able to change, but you could still allow your heart to be touched and even broken by the need by seeing, on, by seeing what's going on here in this world. And what I love about the Good Samaritan is that the Good Samaritan, he stopped to help this man. A man who didn't come from the same background, a man who, who didn't dress like him, and yet he was able to push all that to the side because in the Bible it says that the Samaritan traveling the road came on him. When he saw the man's condition, his heart went out to him. In other translation, it says that this man had compassion because of this man was so hurt. And yet this Samaritan man stopped to help someone who was in need. He stopped his trip. He interrupted his trip to help this man. If we were to continue reading, we would know that this man, the, the Good Samaritan, took this man who needed help and took him to, to, to somewhere to where they can take care of him. And he stayed there with him, guiding him, making sure that this man was going to be okay. And then in the next, uh, uh, next couple of verses, it says that the man uh, left some coins and said, whatever he needs, put it on my tab and I'll come back and take care of it. You know, the greatest miracle that is going to happen in 2020 is changing the way that we think. We need to think differently. What I love about the, about the story of the Good Samaritan is that the Good Samaritan was like, whatever this man needs, put it on my tab. I'll take care of it. You know, changing the way that you think is going to lead us to seeing the change that we want to see in our world. And how you see people is going to affect. We need to... to be open-minded on conversations that we have with people who are not from our same background, from 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 a different ethnicities, different races, different communities, different backgrounds. We need to say whatever they need, I want to be there to help. You know, this is what loving our neighbor looks like. Saying whatever they need. I want to help. I want to be part of the solution. So wherever you're at, just know that we need to be part of the solution. And a lot of us have this mentality of saying, it is not my problem. I don't have to worry about it. But if you really love Jesus Christ, then you must understand to love others as much as you love yourself and be part of the solution. So God bless you. I'll see you guys next time.